Hi everyone, Raptor here. Today I'm going to be doing a video discussing the new card, Shatterstorm, in Popper. I'm going to be discussing some of the depth building choices that I have noticed, as well as what I think is correct and incorrect. I'm going to be discussing the implications that it has for the Popper format, and I'm going to wrap it up with a 5-0 league that I played with the deck. Uh, the videos are going to be replays, but I still think they offer a decent amount of insight into the archetype. So let's get into it. Historically speaking, Storm has been resided to two cards, Rape Shot and Empty the Wards. I think the more powerful of these two is the card Rape Shot because it is much more difficult to interact with. Whereas Empty the Wards, you have cards like Echoing Truth, Moments Peace, Stone Hornet the Fairy, Fiery Cannonade, just to name a few. I think both of these cards are not healthy for Popper and they should not come off the ban list. I think that when it comes to the card Shatter Storm, a lot of people have looked at older lists in which these cards were played in order to base off their current iteration of the new Shatterstorm archetype. I want to discuss why I think that's incorrect, and what I think is the more correct approach when it comes to depth building. So first things first, let's look at one of the older lists that play the cards Rape Shot and Empty the Wards. Uh, I want to preface this by saying that there were a lot of different builds when it comes to the old Rape Shot Deaths and Popper. And so it is difficult to get one particular list that encompasses all the minute differences. However, I think this one is a decent approach in the sense that it plays the Sat lands, the Depletion lands, and it plays Rape Shot and Empty the Wards. I would argue that these builds that play the Sat lands were actually built incorrectly. Um, I know that might be a hot take, and obviously it's easy to say that when we've learned so much, but I think the fact that we have learned so much over the years means that, you know, we can use hindsight in our favor to say, yeah, these were probably not built correctly. Now that we have gained new knowledge, we can use that to look back on the past and say, yeah, we could have done things better. So, my main right is that the mana base is pretty bad. You're playing cards like Sulphur Mints, Ancient Springs, and Irrigation Niche, which are pretty bad, in my opinion. The fact that these come into play tapped, and the fact that you don't really use them for mana until the combo turn, means that these are sort of sit and play, and you just kind of sit there doing nothing. You draw it hard, you play a land, you pass the turn. You draw it hard, you play a land, you pass the turn. And I don't think that's very good depth building. Uh, when you look at Swarm in other formats, especially in Legacy, for example, the reason why those decks are so good is because they spend the early turn sculpting their hand. They're not just sitting there doing nothing. They're playing cards like Ponder, Brainstorm, and Preordate to sculpt their hand. We should be playing these cards. I think the main reason why people are looking at these older lists and thinking that they were good is for two different reasons. One, uh, I would say we just look at what's the most recent and just go with it without really questioning it. And two, I would argue that the reason why these older lists were even earned in the first place was due to the fact that Grape Shot is so resilient. I think it's the combination of Popper being a underexplored format at the time, and Grape Shot being so resilient being the reason that these suboptimal builds were able to get away with being suboptimal. I think had they been more appropriately built, they would have been playing cards like Gush, they would have been playing cards like Attack Seed Probe, Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain, they would have been hand tripping earlier on, they would have been much more insistent, and they wouldn't have been playing garbage cards like Chromatic Star and Chromatic Spear. So, with all that being said, what do I think is the correct approach when it comes to building Storm and Popper? Well, when it comes to Shatter Storm, there's a couple of things I want to note. First, this card is not resilient. It is much more weak than Rape Shot and Empty the Wards. Additionally, you have to pair it with cards like First Day of Class, meaning it's not a one card combo like Grape Shot. You have to find two cards. And to me, that is a really big drawback when it comes to Shatter Storm. Here's one of the lists that I've seen people playing. There's a couple things I want to address with these lists. First, we're not playing any hand rips. We just have to hope that we find what we need. Meaning that we have to hope that we find Shatter Storm in like the top 20 cards. If all the Shatter Storm are in the bottom 10, we're going to lose. We're never going to win the game. That to me is a problem. Secondly, we're only playing 8 lands, which I think is obnoxious because you're just not going to win a number of games because either you have some mullet in to hit a land route, or you only hit one land, and then you just kind of went raw ill for a while, and then you had it ill for it, and you fizzled and died. 
Uh, and so the health of that, I think this deck is not very resilient, and tries to heal the opponent as quickly as possible, and the trade-off is, well, I hope that I'm fast enough, and that I hope they don't draw any disruption, and I think that that's not ideal when it comes to deck building. One of the things that I've been seeing a lot when it comes to this build is people posting screenshots saying, oh my god, I healed on turn two, right? Now, I've done this as well, and it's fun to do that, but I think that this sends a false message of how broken this deck is, and they're not showing the other half side of the coin. You have games like this, where you didn't really do anything, and, you know, now you have to go for it, your opponent has disruption up, and you kind of have to hope you find what you need in, like, the top, you know, four cards here. Um, spoiler, in this particular instance, this player lost, like, didn't find what they needed, and they just died. But, the fact that you have no hand grips, no setup. You just kind of have to sit there and help you draw what you need. It means like you're not very resilient and you're much more susceptible to hate. And I think that when people are going to, you know, prepare for Storm, these builds are going to be pretty bad and pretty suboptimal. So, with that being said, what do I think is correct? Well, for starters, play hand grips. This list here is a no man list poppers format that I have built, and I would argue that this is the best format you could build in popper if there were no bands, at least when it comes to the main board. We're playing the best hand trips, Ponder Created Rainstorm, we're playing Ecapsid Probe, Dust, Treasure Cruise, some of the best blue cards in the history of magic, and then we're just playing the best rituals in Rake Shot. Um, this deck is very powerful, very consistent, and in my experience in playing No Bandless Popper, it is very resilient. But you're also still very fast, and the other part I like about it is that you can spend your early turn sculpting a hand and finding what you need. So with that being said, I took that No Bandless uh, Popper deck and I adjusted it for Shatterstorm. Uh, you can see here I'm still playing the hand grips, I'm still playing the rituals, but I'm not able to play Great Shot, Pressure Cruise, Ecapsid Probe, or Gush. Uh, I, instead, I hunt Great Shot for Shatterstorm, I hunt uh, Ecapsid Probe for Beefunets, and then Pressure Cruise and Gush, I hunt them for first day of class because, uh, you know, I need to uh, play that hard launch site Shatterstorm in order for it to be a one turn kill. Um, I play an idea for mount just because, eh, having a little bit of hard draw is nice. And then most importantly, I'm playing a couple of eight rounds on the main board to let me fight through possible disruption, whether that's counter spells or prismatic frames, or whether the storm or falls or whatever. But being able to tap out your opponent is a really big deal. So this to me is where we should be starting when it comes to storm. I think if you want to have longevity, you need to have hand trips, you need to be able to sculpt your hand appropriately, and you need to be able to have some amount of resiliency. And I think that this particular version of Storm uh, is where that is at. So, with that being said, let's hop onto Magic Online and discuss this more in depth. Alright, so here we are on Magic Online. Uh, let's kind of break this down a little bit more in depth, so we'll go for the pile view. Um, so first off, we're obviously playing the best hand trips. We're going to be playing Rainstorm, Ponder, Preordain, and then we're going to be playing Pure Through Nets because I think this is the next best option in this format. Uh, in terms of rituals, we are playing Seating Song, Lotus Petal, uh, and Manamorphos. Now, Manamorphos is not necessarily a ritual, but I consider it to be one just for the sake of discussion. So, I think these are pretty standard, and I wouldn't really change them. Um, in terms of the rest of it, obviously we're going to play for Shatter Storm, and I'm only playing three first day of class because I found that you only really want one, and drawing two feels pretty bad. And then I'm playing two Eaton Rouse to deal with Disruption, and three Ideals and Bounds to kind of have a little bit of hard draw on the combo turn. It's difficult to find better options for Storm. Um, obviously, I looked at cards like Accumulated Knowledge, Words of Wisdom, and I haven't found them to be that great. Um, I wish there was better card draw and better spells I can play. Uh, obviously, Gush and Treasure Cruise are pretty difficult to replace, but, um, yeah, I think this is sort of a decent starting point, and it's what I've considered uh, going into the meta game. In terms of the sideboard, I have two Dispel, uh, this is sort of hat shell answers. The third Eaton Rouse, because sometimes it's useful. Firing Hand and Age for Elves, because I consider that to be kind of a your matchup. 
Um, and it's also just really in random decks as well. Having a sweeper is nice. At Rink 2, there's a Hat Hell Answer. Deep Analysis is buried in the control matchups as well as decks that might be playing uh, Hand Disruption. Duck Shot is very good against Heart Clan Shaman and Martyr of Ashes, both of which I suspect will uptick in popularity. Flaring Pain, pretty against Prismatic Friends, pretty against Moments Beast, what can I say? And then, lastly, I have Introduction to Prophecy, because we do play, uh, you know, first day of class, and having a lesson to tutor up some amount of the time is useful. So with that being said, um, I don't think that this particular build of Storm is, you know, 100% optimal. The many game is too new, and there are too many things going on for me to know uh, if this is 100% correct. But hopefully you can kind of understand why I think playing Rainstorm Preordained Ponder is where you want to be. It lets you spell to hand and find what you need, as well as in the sideboard games, it lets you find answers to potential disruption your opponent might be having. Um, I think that, you know, sacrificing, you know, the speed of the Satland build in favor of actually being resilient and being able to deal with disruption uh, is where you want to be when it comes to Storm. Um, not to mention this build can still heal somewhat quickly. You can heal on turn 2 and turn 3. It's just not going to happen as frequently. Um, and I also want to keep in mind that, you know, while that might sound like a negative, you have to keep in mind that the Satland builds don't even heal on turn 2 and turn 3 that much more frequently to the end with. Um, if they weren't healing on turn 2 or turn 3, like 80% of the games, yeah, we might have a problem, but they don't. Uh, and so because of that, um, I don't really think we're losing that much, and I would argue that this is a better approach when it comes to Storm. So with that being said, I'm going to hop into some of the replays for my 5-0 Elite, and we can discuss the games at length. Alright, so we are back for the first match of this particular league. Um, I want to give a preface and say that I will not be showing every every match in the league. Uh, this is due to the fact that I think some of them are not very interesting. Um, it was mostly me just killing my opponent and them not having interaction. There was that, and also there was a mirror, uh, specifically the blue-red mirror, which I think is mostly dice rolling, and there's not a ton to say about that. So let's hop into match one. We are up against Affinity, and I think this hand is a heap. Now, I want to address something real quick. One of the things that I think is very difficult when it comes to playing Storm correctly, uh, at least when it comes to this build, is knowing how to hand trip appropriately. Here I am on the play, and the question I have for people watching is, should you preordain? I think in this spot the answer is no. If I had more hand trips in hand, you could make the argument. But this hand is kind of all in on preordain, and if I don't know what I'm playing against, why should I preordain? I don't know what I'm looking for. Now, if my hand had, say, more hand trips and it had more lands, then yeah, I can see the argument for asking preordain. Because I already have more hand trips, I already have my next land drops, I'm just trying to assemble some rituals, right? I kind of have an idea of what I need. In this case, yeah, I need more lands, but... I also, you know, might want a Shatter Storm, I might want to hit more hand trips, I don't know. So, I think in this spot, because I'm kind of all in on pre name, it's best to be a little bit patient here and just pass the turn. So, as we can see, they play a Chromatic Star, and what do you know, I draw up Rainstorm. So, let's look, let's play a pre name here real quick. Now, here I see it has a Lotus Metal. Had I passed my pre name turn 1, I would have seen Rainstorm and a Lotus Metal, and I would have said, well, I don't want either of those because I want to hit my land, so I have to bottom both, and I would have drawn another Eaten Rouse, which would have felt pretty bad. I think because I was patient here, I was able to draw a good hard Rainstorm and then bottom the other two. So I think it paid off. And fortunately, I draw a land, so I can play that and pass the turn. Here my opponent plays another Chromatic Star, they play a Screen Leap Drum, a Frog Might, and they play a Thought Pass. So they're really going off. I think Affinity is one of these decks that has gotten quite a bit of upgrades uh, with the new Modern Horizon set. Um, so, you know, they definitely can have these really explosive draws as seen here. So here, because Affinity can be kind of explosive and fast, I think it is a to Brainstorm. I want to make sure I can find more things. So here I Brainstorm and I see a uh, Mountain and a uh, another island, which is great. So here I believe I put that both seat in solid because neither are very useful. Uh, 
and um, I want to play my island so that way I can kind of hide what I'm on. You know, they might think I'm blue red fairies or blue black fairies or blue black delver of some sort, uh, and so I'd rather conceal information when I am. So here they're thought casting, um, and they're kind of, you know, playing a lot of artifacts, they're really flooding the board, and, you know, this is kind of getting a little scary. Now, I want to talk about a couple decisions here, uh, in terms of where I'm at. Now, could I try and go for it here? Absolutely. Do I think it is correct to go for it here? No. There's a couple reasons for this. First, they have three blockers, so in order for me to kill them, um, I need to be able to produce 23, uh, or I guess not 23, I have to be able to, uh, hit them with 13 goblins, or 13 squirrels, I mean, because they'll block 3 and take 20. That's also assuming they don't have a Yalmonic Blast. Um, so because of that, I would much rather just, you know, pass the turn. And the reason why I'm also passing is because this allows me to use the address as sort of a hand grip or a moment of speed, which means it kind of cycles itself, uh, which I like. Uh, I don't mind waiting another turn in one more look because that might be valuable, and I don't think I'm dead just yet. So here we enter combat, and now I decide to use the address. I want to use it at the beginning of combat because this way, um, if they want to, you know, tap out on their main phase, I don't have to tap out a land for that. Uh, and also, it means that they want to throw mana on it own way, um, so they don't even get to use it effectively. So here I tap out in Mirror Forcer and their lands, because in doing it this way, I ensure that I'm not dead to, like, double Yalmonic Blast, which is definitely a possibility. And it also puts them in a tough spot, because they don't want to hold that creatures for Spring Leap Drum, they'd much rather attack all in. Uh, and so then that way, Spring Leap Drum effectively doesn't produce mana, and here they play tap land, and they're effectively tapped out, right? Uh, well, then they play Immune Force, so now they're not tapped out, but, um, you know. I think this is a much better spot to go for it than last turn, so let's start going off. So I Ritual, then I Ritual again, then I Metamorphose for blue and green, uh, here I Ponder. And, or, I guess I, um, I, I, I first made a class, which I think is correct, because, um, uh, I would want to get introduction of prophecy, so that makes sense. Uh, I don't think the order matters too much there, but, you know, grabbing that definitely seems useful. And here I see another first day of class, which just makes this easy. Uh, now I can, uh, you know, brainstorm. Uh, you know, just put back some cards, I can mana more for fun, I can first day of class, brainstorm, shadow storm, and I have 30 power, or 33 power. And so yeah, my opponent is dead, and you can see the fact that being able to sort of hand trip early on, set up what I need, meant that I was able to kind of sculpt a hand, and really find what I needed, right? I was able to ask for your name, brainstorm, ponder, brainstorm, brainstorm. And uh, I think being able to ask all those hand trips in this game was very helpful in allowing for me to, you know, essentially establish what I need and heal my opponent. So that was game one, and let's hop into game two. Alright, so we're back for the second game here. In terms of how I signed Morning, I hunt a Seedling Song and an Ideas Unbound, and I born in in two copies of uh, Nut Shot. Uh, I'm still learning how to sign Morn. Uh, with, uh, Swarm, so, you know, my, my morning might change a little bit. Uh, however, it's early enough in the meta that I think, uh, you know, you want a shot for Heartland Shaman, and having a couple of rounds is nice, uh, but I think, you know, they're gonna have a lot of blasts, so shaving some of the weaker cards against blast effects is ideal. Um, I could also see hunting another idea of a mound for another in rouse. Uh, it all depends, but, uh, you definitely don't want to hunt too many things because then you're not gonna be fast enough. So, you want to, you know, mourn in enough, but also minimize your, uh, susceptibility to interaction. So, this hand here is pretty good. I have Yacht Shot for Heart Clan Shaman. I have Shatter Storm, I have a lot of hand grips, I like it quite a bit. So here, I'm going to lean off on uh, Ponder, because if I see bad cards on top, I want to shuffle them away. Here I see Lotus Metal, which I'm a fan of, uh, Ponder, and Pruning, so I'll take all of those, and just pass the turn. Here my opponent plays Prism, and they pass it back. 
then I just play Pew Nips. The reason why I'm playing Pew Nips on my main phase is because I don't want to pick for, for how to really just smell a red blast. I'd rather just get it in while I can. Here I see uh, an uh, Metamorphose I use about Pew Nips and Pew Nips, and I take the Metamorphose because I think that heart is pretty important, and uh, the rest of them are not super crucial right now. You might want to play some Atoll, and they tap out for Heartland Shaman, so as we can see, they have the Hate Heart. Now, my hand here is actually looking pretty good. I have lots of rituals, right? Mind of Flame, Lotus Metal, Seating Sun, Metamorphose. I have the Shatter Storm effect. I have Grape Shot for the Heartland Shaman, and I have a couple of hand trips to try and find what I need. So I decide, you know what? I'm going to try and go for it here, and let's just ponder and see what I have. So, I see Brainstorm, Nut Shot, and Seating Sun. Um, unfortunately, these are not really what I want, um, because, first off, if I take, you know, one of these, I'm not going to go off this turn. Um, and secondly, uh, I just don't think they really give me anything that I need. They're not a land drop, they're not an eaten route to tap them out, they're not, you know, more ritual effects, they're not a first aid class. Um, I just think this sounds a ritual, but it's not really one that's super crucial. Um, it's just really not in the vein of what I want, so, um, I end up shuffling. Not to mention, if I didn't take these, the odds of me um, really just turn up pretty low, because I have to go Lotus Metal, Rite of Flame, Seating Song, and then Mana Morgos is gonna give me my colored mana, right? Um, I'm only gonna have, like, a blue and a green at that point, which is, like, pretty risky, so, I don't want these, I'm just gonna shuffle. And, lo and behold, I found the other Mana Morphos, which is actually a pretty good draw. Um, my best draws there were Rhino Flame and Mana Morphos, and I hit the other Mana Morphos. So, now I consider my, you know, my odds are a lot higher, I should probably consider going for it. So, I heal their, uh, you know, Heart Clan Shaman, and then I heal Rhino Flame, Saint Inksan, Mana Morphos. I get Blue Blue here because, um, I don't want to, um get green yet, because I have another Mana Morphos, and preferably you want green at the end. You don't want it, you know, during the combo. You just want blue-red. So, here I see a first ant class. I play that. Um, I just, I think I, here I decide to, uh, or no, excuse me, I Mana Morphos. So now I get the green. That makes sense. And then I, uh, I play first ant class. And here I end up disarming Pew Nets, because I want to hit a one-mana spell. I miss. It's unfortunate. Uh, and then I just play Shatter Storm, and, uh, more or less hit them for 18. Uh, if I had gotten one more Storm here, it would have been lethal on turn 3 through a Heartland Shaman, but, uh, unfortunately, that was not the case. Uh, here I held that a blocker because they couldn't heal me here. They go, yeah, I'm on it blast, yeah, I'm on it blast, uh, playing Artifacts and, and attack. So, I want to play around that. Um, and so, yeah, you can see, had I not held that a blocker, I was dead on board. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I played that reasonably okay, maybe I should have held that a second lot or just in case, but, um, uh, yeah, I held them on turn, uh, turn four, more or less, through the function. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, having the hand trips kind of find what I needed and help me set up was pretty crucial in that game. Uh, had I hit another one mana spell or like a lotus metal, they would have been dead. Uh, yeah, overall, I think this was a pretty powerful, uh, showing for the, for the storm net. And, uh, yeah, I think Dutch Shot and Eaton Rouse do a lot of heavy lifting in this matchup. Being able to tap out your opponent, uh, as well as Heartland Shaman are two things that I value quite highly. So that was match one, let's hop into match two. Now, match two is a Storm Mirror, but they are the Sightland build. And the reason why I'm playing this match is because I want to illustrate, uh, you know, the pros and cons of each particular iteration. So, this hand is a pretty bad hand, I have to mulligan. And then I keep a one lander. Now, I want to illustrate that my net mulligan is much better than the Satland build because um, I mulligan into land some hand trips, right? Every turn I just kind of sculpt my hand appropriately. Um, I think that's a pretty big deal. So here I'm at the bottom of Redundant Ponder, and my opponent immediately, the second I see Hermanic Star, I know that they're an unfair net and they're up to no good. So, you know, they cite the Hermanic Star, they write a flame, desperate ritual, they're going off. And you can see here, they play in uh, Shatter Storm, and, uh, you know, that's about it. Uh, so, they had a turn to heal, but, so what? You know, like, this is the problem with these builds, in my opinion, is that 
they're playing a ton of mana and like no hard selection or hard rock, right? And so, I mean, if they could have waited, but then they're just doing nothing, sitting there and hoping to draw, you know, a first day of class, like, I don't know. The odds are pretty bad. Whereas a build like this, I'm gonna get to ask Ponder, you know? So, I used to see Ash Baron, the Mountain, like, I'm feeling pretty good. And I have a lot of time as well, so I'm not really under that much pressure. I cycle here, um, I, you know, here I just pass, like, why not, you know? And I also want to illustrate, like, had they been patient, like, I know some people might say, oh, they should have waited, they just want to hit more lands. Like, <laughs> I don't think it would have mattered. And once again, this was the problem with not playing Andrips. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Here I see, uh, a Rite of Flame, a Man of Morphos, and an Ideos inbound. Obviously, I would love to have all of these. But, um, I think I'd say the Ideos inbound here, because, um, I have enough mana. Right? I already have Rite of Flame, I already have Man of Morphos. Typically, when I play Swarm, I like to diversify my hand a little bit. Uh, and I draw the other, the other Rite of Flame. So here I pre name. And at this point, I'm like, okay, I, I gotta go for it. Like, the odds of me dying here are pretty low. Or whiffing, I should say, are pretty low. Uh, you know, I'm gonna just draw so many cards here. I hit a brainstorm, I hit a mute nuts, I hit the first eight class, and so then it's just elementary. Uh, you know, I'm just going up, doing my thing, blah, blah, blah. At this point, it really doesn't matter how I, uh, play this out. I can just play at random and heal my opponent. And that's more or less what happens. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I get 15 power with the, of squirrels on turn 4, or 15 storm with the squirrels, 30 power on turn 4, and heal my opponent. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's why this build is much better, like, the fact that early on I have to cast, like, multiple hand trips, and then I was like, yep, I have everything, go for it, like, it's a pretty big deal. So, uh, yeah, all in all, uh, pretty proud of, uh, of how I played this game, and, uh, yeah, let's hop into match number, or game number 2. Alright, so we're back for game number two. Uh, in terms of how I sideboarded, I boarded out both Eaton Rouse and a Sinking Son for three at Ring Truth. That's about it. At Ring Truth destroys them, and Lurnet is not very resilient, so that's how I'm going to board. They play a tap land on turn one, I just say land go. Uh, here I actually made a, mis uh, a mistake because I accidentally clicked through the turn. I meant to cycle for a island uh, on the end set, but I messed up, so here I'm a little annoyed about that because um, it means that I will have to uh, give them a window to kill me. But the thing is, they played Faithless Learning, which is like card disadvantage, which seems really bad in a combinant where you're not using the graveyard. Um, so I'm like, well, it sucks, but the odds they kill me here are pretty low. So I'm just going to, you know, play a partner and, you know, see what I can grab. And here I see some land, which I'm, I'm totally fine with. Uh, I'm just gonna take both of those. Um, there was, there was a Shader Swarm on top, but I don't really want the third copy, so I'm gonna shuffle. Um, and here you can see my opponent is just, uh, you know, just chilling. Here you just play another hand trip. I get rid of a Shader Swarm and a Lotus Petal. Uh, I don't really want the Lotus Petal, and um, I don't really need the second Shader Swarm in most scenarios, so. Uh, I'm just gonna put those away, and, uh, you know, continue to hit my land drops, take it slow. Uh, here I just, you know, shuffle and, uh, you know, pass the turn. And here you can see my opponent finally decides, oh, hey, I should go for it. And let's just watch them go for it here. They're going off, they're going off, they're going off, they're going off, da, 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 da. And they play Introduction to Prophecy, they play a Petal, and they play Shatter Storm. Well... Unfortunately for them, I had the answer. Boom, boom, gone. Then on their second main phase, they play it again. And, well, unfortunately for them, I also had the answer to this. Uh, and the, the bad part about this, by the way, uh, whoops. <laughs> I apologize for clicking through that. That's, I don't know what Magic Online was doing. Um, the bad part about this, by the way, is like, they have nothing. Um, I think... The nice part about my list is that I at least have these top decks for like hand trips, where it's like, I don't know what their top decks are, and they have no lands in play, so it seemed pretty bad. On my turn, I decide to lead up with ideas and down, because at this point, um, all I'm really looking for is a Rite of Flame. So I go, ideas and down, ideas and down, play a panel, ponder, hope to hit Rite of Flame, and then I see Rite of Flame on top, and then it becomes pretty easy. Um, the reason why I wanted to hit Rite of Flame was because Rite of Flame has 
eat hard named Rhino Flame and eat Rain Yard. Not just Might Rain Yard. So my Rhino Flame was going to add me two red and then two more red for their Rhino Flame. So it was like a, a slightly better dark ritual. Um So yeah. Uh if I when ideas ideas Rhino Flame, I and then just OC and saw Metamorph with Metamorpho, so then it was pretty easy. So that's what I ended up doing here. And, uh, I apologize for kind of rushing through that there real quick, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything to worry about at this point, I can just, you know, start going off, going crazy, uh, and the funny part is I actually have enough for Triple Shatter Storm, so I'm gonna have, like, you know, 60 plus power, and, uh, you know, put them at Mayonnaise, uh, which I think is pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I Shatter Storm here, and they are dead. So, uh, yeah, all in all, this is pretty fun, pretty sweet, um, and yeah, I think it really goes to show that while they might be more explosive, they're not very consistent, they don't have much in ways of hard advantage or hard selection, uh, and I think those are both pretty serious, uh, issues with their, uh, iteration of Swarm. So, yeah, easily, uh, 2 well over the mirror. And, uh, yeah, let's hop into the third and final match. Alright, so we're back, uh, against, uh, for the third and final match, we are up against, like, Blue-Red blue Serpentine. Um, this hand is okay. Uh, in certain matchups, it might be too slow, but it has land drops, it has a little bit of hard selection. Uh, I'm on the play. I don't hate it. He only plays Slip One at Cliffs, which makes me think they're on Tron, but it turns out there's just some, like, Blue-Red control, which, like, you know, it's there. It makes sense. Uh, I've seen this in the Serpentine Nets before. So, here, um, I peer the Nets, and, uh, fortunately, they don't counter-smell it. Um, I kind of regret it not, uh, playing that on my main phase, but I thought they were Tron, and turns out they're not Tron. So, here, I'll take Metamorphose, this is the most unique card, and then I'm, I play a, a Fetch Land here. Um, I bought up two Rhino Flames, which is not great, because I do like that card, so I do decide to, um, uh, Shuffle before I peer through nets. The reason why I'm not peer through nets in on my main phase is because I think that shows a sign of weakness, um, and I don't want to kind of signal anything like that. Um, also, the other reason why I don't peer through nets is because I'd rather just not cast it. Like, I'm not under any pressure, and I'd rather, like, wait and draw help more cards and get more, uh, you know, information before I cast it. And here it turns out I drew another peer through nets, which is a very good card. So now I can cast peer through nets. Uh, I see Shadow Storm, uh, I also see Rhino Flame. Uh, I think Rhino Flame is more important than the Shadow Storm here, because, like, you want more mana, um, and typically I can find Shadow Storm later on. I don't have to have it in my opening hand for it to be lethal. Um, not to mention, multiple Shadow Storms are pretty awkward, whereas multiple Rhino Flames, not really that bad. Um, so yeah, that was more or less my thought process there. Uh, here I take, um... I play Beard the Nuts, and I want to hit a Eaton Rouse, so I can tap them out, and lo and behold, I find the Eaton Rouse. So now I'm just going to land ill for a little bit, uh, hoping I can tap them out at some point. Uh, here I'm playing it pretty slow, uh, and I can kind of afford to do that because I have no pressure. Um, here I just decide, uh, I don't know what's going on here, the replay is breaking on me, or what's going on. Um, Okay, it looks like the replay does end up breaking, unfortunately. But, um, TLDR, they play a creature here, or they play a smell here. I tap them out on their end set, and then I just get to go Lotus Petal, or Rhino Flame, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Metamorphos, first day of class. Um, I think I hit a hand trip as well, and then I just go to Shadow Storm, Shadow Storm, and kill them. Uh, but yeah, I killed them on the on the following turn. Um, even though I was tapping them out, was pretty effective, and it's why I like having it in the main board because otherwise I might have counter spells, and you know that that might you know r r potentially you know stop me from killing them. So uh, yeah, I like having it in rows. But uh, the other thing here is that um, you know it also stops potentially hate cards like fiery cannonade. So um, yeah, that's that. Uh, we won M one. Let's hop into M two. Alright, so in terms of sideboarding, I boarded out Double Seeking Song, um, which I'm not really, uh, too much of a fan of, 
and I'm morning in a deep analysis and a eight and rows. The reason why I'm morning out uh, sleeping sun is that we play a longer game, so I don't need as many rituals. Uh, I'm gonna have more land routes in play usually, and uh, I would have rather have an eight and rows to tap them out. A deep analysis is just randomly going at drawing more cards and handing more land routes. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty simple in terms of morning. Uh, here it is a land go. Once again, because it's a longer matchup, I don't mind holding on the hand groups. I'm not trying to race here. I'm trying to play it slow. I know my role in this matchup. Uh, and he, yeah, I just take an Ash Barons and pass the turn. I have a Satan Sun on top that I wouldn't mind drawing. Here my opponent is tapping out raw ears and whatnot. And I'm just going to take it easy. Here I, uh, I play Brainstorm and I top that uh, first day of class and an Ash Barons. And I'm not in a shelter here because, quite frankly, I don't want to. And once again, I'm being pretty patient. All I'm really trying to do is just ensure that I can hit my land drops and take it from there. Here my opponent plays to hold the multiverse. And here I decide, oh, hey, let's find it in a uh, brainstorm while I can. Uh, I believe they reveal the red blast, so uh, I want to make sure that I don't have to worry about that uh, countering a brainstorm. So here I put back a ponder and a land, and then I just pass the turn. Uh, here, I'm not going to shuffle because, once again, I would not mind handing a land. So now I shuffle because I don't really need the ponder, and I wouldn't mind, you know, trying to hit more action. Uh, so yeah, here I put your name. I see an Ash Barons and a Shadow Storm. Don't really want the Ash Barons, but I will take the Shadow Storm. And then I see Mana Mortar and Sleeping Sun. Definitely want both of those. So I just go top, top, and pass the turn. Uh, uh, Oh, I guess I bought him the Seat and Sun, my mistake. Um, I wouldn't have mind drawing the Seat and Sun, but I can kind of see why I wouldn't bottom it. I don't really need it at this point, because I do have a lot of mana. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, anywho, uh, here I play it in rows, tapping out my opponent, because I feel like this is my window. Uh, if I can tap out most of their blue, uh, they're probably not going to be able to win anyways, and then I just go for it. Um, uh, they didn't really have anything, so whatever. I'm just going to go crazy. Uh, I, I get some blue mana here, I get some green, they rent last me, I get some more mana here, uh, you know, I first day of class, get introduction to prophecy, play introduction to prophecy, play shadow storm, hit him for 20, and they die. Uh, so yeah, that was that, we won that match, uh, pretty handily. Um, I think, you know, if they had more counter spells and they had a net range truth, um, you know, this might have been more sketchy, maybe they could have countered some of the eight and half copies and then held up at ring through, so, you know, it could have been a little bit more tricky, but, um, they just didn't have it, and they lost. So, uh, yeah, that was the third match. Uh, for recap, we went, uh, 3-0, 6-0. Uh, the other two matches were both 2-0 wins, uh, Meet the Mirror, which I won the nice roll, uh, and then both more games, I just was faster, um, and then I beat Boris uh, Monarch, uh, because they just didn't have any interaction. So, uh, yeah, that was that. Uh, and let's hop into the recap. So, we're back for the recap. All in all, I think this iteration of Storm is where you want to be. I think it is a, uh, better, uh, suited to deal with disruption, and just hand trips aren't powerful in general. Uh, with that being said, what are my thoughts on Shadow Storm as a card? Do I think this is going to get banned? Do I think it should be removed from Popper? Um... Right now, I think it's hard to say. I think right now, everyone is pretty man happy, and they think the sky is falling. Um, there's been a lot of hyperbolic uh, reactions that I think are uh, a little bit unwarranted. Uh, with that being said, I do think that this card is unhealthy for Popper. Um, I think that uh, there, uh, there should be a more nuanced approach when it comes to this S in this card um, that doesn't involve the, the, the sky is falling narrative that I've been seeing quite frequently. Uh, I'm of the opinion that Shatter Storm is unhealthy for Popper, not because it's broken, as many people say, but because it narrows the format and creates unhealthy gameplay. Uh, the fact that you have to kind of mull it into sideboard hate, uh, the fact that game one, a lot of people don't really have tools to fight this, means that it doesn't create a very healthy dynamic for Popper. Um, not to mention, I mean, we can beat sideboard hate anyways, with cards like it Rouse. So, uh, or just randomly healing them. It's like, they have to assemble something early on. They have to tap out and do something to get more presence. And in doing so, they might be opening themselves up to just dying. 
So you put people in a weird spot where they don't want to tap out, but at the same time, they kind of have to. And sometimes when they tap out, they die anyways. And we saw that in the Affinity match, where they tapped out turn three, and they're like, okay, go for it. And then they just died anyways, you know? Like, that's not ideal in terms of gameplay, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not really a fan of that. So, I think Hannah Storm should go. Uh, time will tell if it does, but I don't think it's very healthy for Buffer. I think... Um, it will narrow the format, it will push out certain decks that just don't have correct tools. Um, and, uh, I think people will have to over-correct their, their, their lists to deal with it, and they will be dedicating quite a bit of sideboard slots, and I think it will just create a bad, you know, format, and it will just push out certain archetypes, and, you know, I, I don't think that's great, you know. Um, I think I expect to see a rise in blue-black fairies, um, I think Affinity will become more popular, um, and I think we're gonna see top eights that are much less diverse than we would want them to be. Um, and I think until, you know, Storm goes away, uh, we're not gonna see that change. I think Storm, you know, it might not be putting up a ton of top eight results, but, um, I think, you know, it's the on the format will be more subtle, in the sense that when you look at diversity and what's viable, the, the options are much less restricted or much more restricted, rather, in terms of what's viable. Uh, so, yeah, I think overall the success of the format will be unhealthy, and I certainly hope that it will go away in time. Uh, I don't think it necessarily has, it, you know, the numbers quite not quite yet, especially with the bad builds that play the Satlands, but um, I do think that its effect on the format is still unhealthy, and the fact that you can randomly kill people on turn two is not really something I want in a proper format. I think it's something like Legacy that is appropriate, because we have cards like Days, Wasteland, for some Will, for some Nation to really disrupt those types of nets, but in proper we have nothing. We just don't have the proper tools, and I mean, the fact that there's potential for a match to be kill you on turn two, go to the sideboard games, kill you on turn two again, is not really enjoyable, and I don't think that's very healthy for proper. So, that's my take. I don't think it, you know, it should last in Poplar. I hope it goes away. Um, and I do think, you know, the format will be, will be uh, better after that. Um, I do think Affinity is going to be interesting. I think them having eight Mirror Force effects is kind of obnoxious. Uh, I will be doing a video on that, hopefully, sometime in the future. Uh, but right now, I think the format is kind of obnoxious, and I don't really want to make content in a Storm-heavy format. Um, but, who knows, maybe things might even out, but, uh, you know, right now, I think the format's kind of in a rough spot that I would rather kind of take a break and wait and see, uh, before doing anything crazy. Um, one last thing I want to mention, by the way, with Shadow Storm, is that if it doesn't go away, one of the things that you can always do with it is have it be a sideboard card. Um, I could very realistically see something like Familiar, which is like Shadow Storm, and then randomly have games where they just, like, make 10 tokens, you know, like, I think that could also be problematic. The fact that it can be used, like, an empty the Warren sideboard card is not something I'm a big fan of either. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.